today we're going to look at fields and heats reaction and we're going to discuss the factors affecting octane number. We are going to discuss four main factors that affect it, explain what they are. We're going to talk about the fact lead used to be used in petrol but isn't anymore, the whys and how comes behind that and the alternatives. So the factors that affect octane number. From research there's three main factors that are called structural features that affect octane number. We're going to discuss these now and come back to the fourth later on. So your length of chain, very simple. The shorter the chain, the higher the octane number. We know our reference is heptane, which has a zero, but butane C4H10 has an octane number of 94. The degree of branching. Basically, the more branched your chain, the better the octane number. Again, zero being heptane, two methyl hexane has a 65. Um, if we chain, convert that and have a look, 224 trimethyl pentane has an octane number of 100. So as you can see, there's a large degree of branching in our reference for 100, whilst our zero reference has none at all. And then we're going to look at straight chains and cyclical structures. Cyclical structures have a higher octane number. So if we look at hexane with an octane number of 25, cyclohexane is fantastic. It has a number of 83. Remember, cyclohexane is just hexane in a cyclical structure. Making petrol. So in approximately the 1920s, it was discovered that we could add a lead compound called tetraethyl lead. And that used to reduce the amount of knocking in engines. It was called an anti-knock additive. It is not used anymore. Firstly, it poisons the catalytic converters. What does that mean? The catalytic converter could no longer reduce the level of other pollutants in the exhaust because the tetral ethyl lead would actually stick to the surface of the catalytic converter. Have a look at a picture. They're kind of a honeycomb structure. Um, very interesting. So we had to lead to alternatives. And don't forget, lads, lead is poisonous, okay? Um, it was a potential health hazard. It led to pollution from car exhausts. Um, so it was phased out, I think, in Ireland at approximately 1999. Um, and it was replaced with unleaded petrol. So we had to look at alternatives. The alternatives to lead resulted in increasing octane numbers and adding oxygenates. So how could we increase the octane number of our petrol? Well, we can use something called isomerization. Remember we discussed that an isomer was the same chemical formula but different arrangement in space. So if we took our long straight chained alkanes and converted those into short branch chains we would actually increase the octane number. That is very simply done. If you look here on the left hand side we've got pentane at an octane number of 62 where you see two methyl butane at an octane number of 93. This is isomerization at its best. So this is an equilibrium reaction. We'll talk a lot about equilibrium reactions in sixth year, but an equilibrium reaction is one that can go both forwards and backwards. So what we would use is heat and a catalyst to break up those long chained hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons into our branched hydrocarbons. It's basically very large scale production um, in oil refineries. We could use something called catalytic cracking. Catalytic cracking is fantastic. It's breaking down a long chain hydrocarbon by using heat and catalysts into short chains. Basically, again, giving the people and the companies what they want, shorter chained molecules. So you, as you can see there on the left hand side, we take a long hydrocarbon C12H26 we would process that and we would get our products. In this case, 2,4-dimethylpentane. You can see that there's a methyl group on the second carbon and the fourth. And then on the right-hand side, 
we would have two methyl but one in. Remembering when we're naming these guys that the double bond gets the lowest preference. So that's why it's but one in and the methyl group there is sitting on carbon two. Now, whenever we take a saturated hydrocarbon, we will always get a smaller molecule being an alkane and a smaller um, molecule being an alkene. And alkenes are really important in the petrochemical industry. So they are used a lot. So this is a really positive way of taking something that wouldn't be very efficient and turn it into two products that can be used a lot. Now, again, another way of looking at cracking there. The red lines on the top show the bonds that are being broken. So in this case, we'd have propene, 2-methylbutane and but1-ene. If you actually sat down and counted all the carbons in the products, you'll notice that there's 12 of them and there would be the equivalent in every situation. So if you were to take C8 and break that down, you'd probably have a C2, a C4, another C2 possibly. We can also use this method called dehydrocyclization dehydrocyclization so think about that word for a minute it's taking straight chained alkanes converting them into cycloalkanes and liberating hydrogen gas dehydro removing hydrogen cyclization making it a circle so you can see your hexane going to cyclohexane ane, excuse me huge jump in our number and cyclohexane being converted into benzene Benzene having an octane number of 106. Look, it's extremely carcinogenic, cancer causing. And um, benzene is not used obviously as a fuel. It is used in various places within the petrochemical industry and just in pharmaceuticals in general, but you won't see it as a fuel. And its use is strictly limited. So as you can see, going from an octane number of 70, which is quite good, methylbenzene, also known as toluene, 120. We can then alter the octane number. This is step four. So the other three steps we looked at were called structural features. But in this case, we're looking at something called adding oxygenates. Now, an oxygenate is very simple. It's any fuel containing an oxygen molecule. That's all we need to know. That definition is very important. So, for example, we could have methanol, ethanol, or MTBE. This one's quite important, so make a note of it. Methyl, tertiary, butyl, ether. If you can look here, it's got an octane number of 118, and its structure there has a carbon oxygen to carbon bond. That's an ether, it's an ether bond. Adding oxygenates gives rise to very little pollution, which is exactly a fantastic thing when it undergoes combustion. So these are all commonly added to petrol. So this has an other name. Um, it's methyl tertiary butyl ether, and it's called 2-methoxy-2-methylpropane. You do not need to remember the structure of this compound, but you do need its name. So as well as increasing the octane number of petrol, look, there's other advantages we've just talked about. Little, um, they give rise to very little pollution. So they're a cleaner fuel than just hydrocarbons. So the four factors that um, affecting octane number three are structural. One is adding oxygenates. So remembering number one was changing the length of the chain. The shorter the chain, the higher the number. Increased branching is number two. So degree of branching. If you increase the branching, you have a higher octane number. Number three is taking a straight chain and converting it into a cyclical structure. Cyclical structures, again, have a higher octane number. We needed to phase out lead due to its poisonous nature and also the fact that it damaged people's catalytic converters, which were quite expensive. Um, and we looked at alternatives. 
So any other questions on that, just see the comment or send me an email.